Hello and good morning, everyone. I am Sushmita Poddar. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Real World is Nonlinear, Use Abacus to Simulate Reality. Before we get started, just a quick overview about the webinar. This webinar will be one hour long and uh, we will have a Q&A session at the end. If you all have any questions uh, throughout the presentation, please feel free to type them into the question box in your GoToWebinar control panel. We will bring them up after the presentation. Today, uh, we have our Director of Engineering Services, Dr. Arindam Chakravarti, and our Senior Technical Consultant, uh, Mr. Raghavendra Banchar, as our panelist. I would like to start with uh, Arindam's uh, introduction. Arindam Chakravarti has a PhD in mechanical engineering from the University of Iowa and a master's in aerospace structures from IIT Kanpur. He has more than 12 years of academic and industry experience in solid mechanics, fatigue, fracture and reliability analysis. He has worked in oil and gas, nuclear and aerospace industries. He is involved with ASME and API code committees and conference steering groups. He has more than 25 peer reviewed publications and presentations in international conferences and journals. I would also like to introduce our presenter of the day, Raghavendra. Raghavendra has done MTech in mechanical engineering from IIT Bombay. He has 15 years of industrial experience in engineering consulting technical support in the area of finite, finite element analysis, phase design, and validation. As a CAE professional, he has worked on various projects in automotive, aerospace, oil and gas, energy, and heavy machinery industries in various domains such as durability, NVH, and crash worthiness. His expertise is in nonlinear FEA, composite, crash worthiness, optimization, light weighting, and nonlinear multiscale material modeling. He has also worked with Dassault Systems India for over five years and have good understanding of Simulia Abacus products. Uh, yes, Raghavendra, you may take over now. Yeah, thank you, uh, Susmita, for uh, introduction. And uh, thank you everyone for joining our webinar. I know it's a busy day for you all. And thanks once again for um, you know your interest in Wires India. So I will uh, I will first uh, go through the agenda what we are going to um, have for technical uh, discussion today. I will start with uh, our company introduction and then move to uh, the journey of uh, FEA and Abacus, how finite element analysis code were started, how Abacus was started. And what are the you know um, the journey was Abacus, and then again I mean move to uh, linear analysis. What is non-linear analysis? What are the limitations? What are the different characteristics of linear analysis? And then we'll move to um, non-linear analysis. What exactly is non-linearities, and how uh, it is solved? What are different challenges uh, solving non-linear analysis? What are different sources of non-linearities like the material boundary, etc. And then we'll also talk about how what uh, techniques for solving Nolly analysis, different uh, different details, how exactly this computation are done in our code. And if I then I will move to a different use cases of Nolly and final analysis, and we'll conclude finally with a question and answer. So, uh, firstly, uh, the introduction to uh, YS India. So Wise India is a subsidiary of Wise Corporation, which is headquartered in US. So uh, we started our operation in India in early 2019. And if you have uh, attended our webinar, last webinar in uh, in last month, so wherein we have also announced our partnership with Third All System India Private Limited. So we are now official evaluated reseller for Dazzle Systems, uh, which covers uh, all their product for, for portfolios, starting like Abacus, FeSafe, iSight, Tosca, CFD, CST for electromagnetic analysis, Katia, Innovia. 
And um, as a company, uh, we provide uh, software sales services, we provide engineering uh, consulting services, and we also provide um, you know, training. And we can also help you in terms of the PLM implementation and the automations. Uh, we have a, st a strong uh, technical background uh, uh, and we have multiple industry experiences. As we said, you know, uh, we are a subsidiary of um, a US based uh, company, Spice Corporation, and they have been there in the industry for quite a long time. And we started with a consulting company. So we have the domain uh, expertise and the knowledge in the various industries like oil and gas, machineries, equipment, uh, petrochemical process, nuclear nuclear industries, aerospace, medical devices, manufacturing, uh, and automotive. We have a very strong uh, technical team in terms of the experiences, in terms of the capability, in terms of education. Most of our, in fact, all almost all uh, team are either they are in, uh, have PhD degree or masters in the solid mechanics, fluid mechanics, material, numerical simulation, optimization, or reliability. So this is our actual headquarter um, in Houston, USA, one of one floor. Um, that's where our office is. This. And in, in India, we are present in the Hyderabad, Pune, Kolkata, and the Bangalore. So for any um, any services that you have need at your end, so please feel free to reach us. This this uh, actually gives us a quick overview about our uh, the partial list of our customers. Um, that we serve uh, for consulting. Uh, these are mainly from the um, our US company, our parent company. But this is just to give idea that you know some of them may have subsidiary in India, and we will be happy to help you. The knowledge that we have um, serving um, you know the OEMs and the company at the uh, US site, and we are really happy and looking forward to serve in India, and um, looking forward to connect uh, with you all. So we give consulting uh, in the FEA domain, the CFD, and in fact, we, we do also work in data analytics. So you will find um, the various kinds of companies, small to medium to um, big OEMs um, for our consulting, and we are happy and delighted that we serve them. So here, these are the, the partial customer list of um, our, uh, uh, for our software services, software sales, and the training. And in fact, uh, we do a lot of training uh, in, in um, uh, American office, and we are really delighted uh, that we are the partner for the Boeing. We give, uh, we provide them the basic uh, Abacus training and advanced training. So we are closely working with the Boeing and other companies, as you can see here. So we have a very strong uh, technical team in terms of uh, the capability and the experiences. Um, and we have um, um, varieties of uh, technical capabilities that ranges from uh, the component design and the validation using fine element analysis. We can do fracture mechanics. We can do optimization, the reliability, the structural analysis. Um, the CFT, fatigue analysis, composite, even we can help you in terms of the automation and fitness for services. So uh, we are not just a uh, you know, software solution partner, but we are uh, more than that. We have a very good background of consulting. So we understand the nitty gritty of uh, the simulation, design and engineering. So we are committed to our clients and we, we want to be part of your success and we want to you know, collaborate and help you in the technical um, uh, a technical engagement. We have a domain knowledge in fine element analysis, CFD and expert in multiple domains. So we can also review your existing simulation process and uh, help you to uh, take it to the next level. And if you have any requirement, please uh, feel free to reach us. We also uh, provide the customized training, standard training, introductory and advanced training, in-house, on-site and online. And we do have uh, capability for software development, uh, like you know, automating things and uh, Java, C, uh, Python, Python scripting, subroutine, etc. So we have certain concept called the open house day, and that actually we do in our uh, U.S. office, and we are. Um, we have planned to start this concept soon here, wherein is a free backup support open day on every Friday, every month. 
uh, wherein uh, basically um, anybody can reach us and they can discuss about their problem. We can help with our expertise and you can um, let us know any representative model. If you're facing any issues, we can help you in terms of the software, in terms of support, in terms of engineering services. Okay, and um, as I mentioned earlier, we also provide the uh, training services uh, at a different level, in, intro, introductory, advanced, customized training. So please feel free to contact us if you have any need at your end. And uh, we are not just a reseller, but actually we are more than that. We want to be a technology partner with you and we can work uh, with you. We have the global presence. We bring certain knowledge of, of the engineering, how things work at um, different uh, locations. We have the cross industry expertise, we have high skill uh, forces. Most of people are either PhD and uh, master and they have very good number of experience, you know, 10 years, 15 years, and they bring the value to our organizations. So now um, I would move uh, directly to uh, um, the technical content of uh, the webinar today. As a real world is non-linear, use Abacus to simulate reality. So um, I've chosen this particular topic because most of engineering problems are actually non-linear in, in, in a reality and that we need to understand and they need to basically model the physics of it. So I will start um, uh, this with uh, the journey of fine element analysis and Abacus. So it basically shows how fine element analysis uh, was started developing. So it was 1940 wherein the researcher were working on a small code wherein they can numerically find out how certain you know, beams will perform under any loads. So though at that time it was very uh, primitive um, level, they can just compute uh, some responses of some beam actually. And then it basically, you know, started developing a little more and more in 1950s. So they developed 2D elements, then they can do a little bigger problems, but they're still component level. And again, it started developing, keep developing in 1960. So that it was in a stage where they can use this code for some of the smaller problem uh, at, at a commercial level. And that's the time in 1960 where in the finite element uh, came into the picture because uh, in this method, you discretize the component into a small region, the finite region. That's the term finite element came into picture and this word was uh, coined by Clo in 1960s. And since you know we had only 1D and the 2D, okay, we could do a very little use of finite element analysis. And there was a need of actually developing the 3D element and that's the time in 1970s wherein three-dimensional element was formulated. And this was a time where in uh, uh, the more advanced level coding was done. So before 1970s, in you know, a 1D level and 2D level, all the simulation was linear. So they, they, they were applicable to either component level or very small component that can be represented by the beam or the plate. But real a real world component or real world problem needs the three dimensional element and the nonlinear final element analysis. So this was the time the researcher, the coder started you know, working on that. And this was a time wherein um, Abacus was also founded uh, in 1978 by HKS. There were three people, they're working in the nuclear industry and they, um, they thought there's a need for you know, development of nonlinear analysis. And as time progress, um, you know, uh, the nonlinear dynamic uh, simulation codes were also developed like, you know, the, for crash analysis. So before 1980, we could do nonlinear analysis, you know, to uh, part level, to the um, assembly level and the system level. But complete system level, for example, like the full car crash analysis, for that you need nonlinear dynamic codes. So that's for 1980s. And still these final element codes were you know, further being developed and mainly you will see the new elements, new material things. And um, as you know, I mean, there is a finite element uh, tool present and it's being used almost in every industry. I mean, I'm sure you must be using some, some or other code at this point of time. And I just want to reiterate the objective as we are starting from the beginning of the journey. So what is the objective of FEA? It is actually numerically simulate the response of system structure to a given set of loads and boundary condition for the purpose of design. Okay, and 
So basically the main objective was to help them in designing wherein they can reduce the product life cycle, they can reduce the prototyping because when you're using final element code, you are doing everything, all the testing virtually, you're not actually making a prototype. So you, there's no need of prototyping, there's no need of tooling, it reduces tooling cost, and then it improves your product quality because of the research in it. It was also used for accessing the existing structure, not only the new product design. For example, let's say in the right-hand side, is a containment structure of the nuclear power plant. And there are systems or the structure, you know, after some time in the service, you need to basically decide whether it has to be decommissioned or not. So you can do this kind of analysis and you can figure out what is the, you know, the life of that structure so that you can take a decision of decommissioning it or continue in the services. It can be used for establishing the cause and the failure in the structure, there are lots of field failure, maybe in many industry, you, you, you may be aware there are field failure. To understand this one, you can use find element analysis, you can go deeper and deeper and try to understand what is happening and you can troubleshoot that one. And in fact, the most beautiful part of find element analysis, which I think is you can have inside of physics of problem, which is not possible in physical test. In the physical test is time consuming, number one, it is uh, resource consuming, and number two, the monitoring the physical test is very, very cumbersome, sometimes it's not possible. For example, you cannot put a strain gauge everywhere. And even if you put a strain gauges, you know, you have to sometime, if you want to the measurement of the strain at the, at the middle of the thickness, you have to dig it up. So actually you are changing the problem. That's not the real strain or stress that you're measuring there. So this is a, a most powerful tool in terms of analyzing the structure or the system. So by now we have the all uh, three-dimensional non-linear finite element tool in the places, and that is typically be used for simulating. But the main purpose is not just to simulate it. It's not that we apply loads and boundary condition and see, you know, just animation. That's not really purpose. Okay, it's so no meaning. So. The purpose of simulation is not to just simulate, but it is it must be realistic, meaning it should represent the real physics of the problem, unless it is telling exactly what is going to happen in the field, there's no use. So uh, the animation on the right-hand side you see is a virtual simulation of the car crash. You can see the behavior is exactly same as in the physical test. On the left-hand side, you see the testing, the pillar of the car, you see the simulation and exactly depicting the real life behavior. And this is the kind of the simulation we are talking about and that's how would have add the value and we should try to have the realistic simulation in the place. So now when it comes to realistic, we, we need to understand how the whole concept of final element analysis developed and what different kind of analysis we can do. So we need to understand the linear analysis before we need to understand the non-linearity into it. So what is uh, linear analysis? The linear analysis is the analysis wherein your response is a linear, something like this one. You have the deflection and the load. So as you increase the load, your deflection also increases in a, in a proportion. Okay. So here, your deflection is proportional to the force and you have the constant stiffness and it does not change over the time. So this is a linear FE analysis. Why we call it linear? Because you see this response is a linear. You have the slope constant, okay? So what does it really also mean is the characteristics of the linear analysis that because it is a linear, you apply any load, you will get one point for it, meaning for every load, there is a deflection. For any load, there is a deflection. Therefore, any load you have vertical line, you will meet on a point on this particular response line. So that is a solution for this uh, structure. So there's always a unique solution. You will always find a solution in linear analysis. And it also exhibits the scaling, meaning if you have applied 100 Newton load and this deflection is 10 mm, then it means if you apply 200 Newton load, then your deflection will be 20 Newton. Even you can also have the superimposition, meaning if F1 is causing 10 mm and F2 is causing 20 mm, then when you apply F1 plus F2, it will it will cause 10 plus 20 is a 30 mm. So it's a very straightforward analysis, you know, it's a linear analysis. 
So we can understand with a simple problem, there's a cantilever problem. You have one load applied here that you can see. And it is very easy, you know, uh, there's a very easy formula I put up here is a deflection PLQ by 3EI. If you look at this equation, the, our deflection is proportional to P, something like this. So with this one, you can say this is a linear analysis. Uh, you, we, we all have basically studied our strength of material, wherein we have uh, studied the, all the analytical solutions, something like this one. This is a linear analysis, but there are lots of assumptions, if you remember, in our strength of material, uh, like material is isotropic, it is elastic in nature, small deformation, cross-section remains constant, there's a no change in the boundary condition. With all this all assumption, we can say this is the formula. Okay, if this assumption is not valid, then this formula is also not valid. So there are lots of assumption when we're using analytical solution or when you're doing the linear analysis. Okay, so the formula you will see is F is equal to Kx, F is a force, K is a stiffness, X is a deflection. So here you will see, the uh, stiffness is constant because here the slope is constant. Once you compute the, the stiffness K, you can have any deflection computed for any load. So that's very straightforward. So one, one thing that you need to compute is a, a stiffness. But of course, there are lots of assumptions. If, if all the assumptions are in place, then only you can use this linear analysis. So what happened is, um, if our system is nonlinear or the complex, and if you're still using linear analysis, then what will happen? So let's say this here in, in this particular example, my response real uh, response is the dash line. And if I use a linear analysis, my response will be this one. So obviously you can see there are lots of deviation. It is, I mean, we are not saying that we should not do linear analysis. Of course, we can do linear analysis and we must try to do linear analysis provided all the assumptions are in the place. If any of the assumption is not valid, then you need to basically look for more advanced analysis that is nonlinear analysis. For example, here you see the powertrain here. I mean, as you see the engine is a huge block, is a big model. Still, you can use linear analysis provided as a linear elastic, there's a deformation is very small, okay? All the assumptions are in the place. You can do linear analysis. But what happens if you do, if your problem is not linear, but you're using linear, there's a deviation. So there is a wrong judgment of performance. Okay, you can, there would be a mistake in judging the performance. And this may also lead you to the over design. In today's world, over designing is actually a failure of the product, not the component, but it's a product. We need to be competitive. So now moving to the nonlinear analysis. Um, what is nonlinear analysis? It's just opposite of the linear analysis, wherein wherever your response of the structure is not linear, whenever it's nonlinear, something like this is called a nonlinear analysis. Here is very important to note that the stiffness is not constant here. At the beginning, you have the K1. As you def keep deforming, the stiffness keep changing. For each and every point and each and every load, the stiffness may keep changing. So this equation F is not equal to Kx, okay? F is not equal to Kx. The stiffness keep changing and that's the biggest challenge because we need to compute the huge stiffness matrix each and every time as we keep, go, we go along this particular curve, okay? So what are the nonlinear problems? Okay, we have just talked about linear, but what are the nonlinear problems? Actually, all the problem in the nature are linear. Even we are doing the, uh, sorry, every problem is non-linear. There is possibility that we are doing linear analysis. Yes, we should do linear analysis provided we have all the assumption in the places and we have all the reasonable assumption in the place. So you can see some of the um, simulation here, like the crimping, like the crushing, like the crash analysis. This is these are high deformation problems. Okay, these are all nonlinear problem. We cannot actually you know, do the linear analysis for it. Why? Because the our assumption does not hold good here. 
our material does not remain elastic, deformation doesn't remain small, the cross-section keep changing, the load direction keep changing. So these kind of problem, we need to do the nonlinear analysis. But the problem with the nonlinear analysis is computationally is very difficult and time consuming. Why? Because we have to compute the stiffness in each and every point as we keep moving over the time. And another problem with the nonlinear analysis is it may diverge and it's possible that you don't get a solution also as difficult to troubleshoot as well. So what we need is you need the right engineering judgment to model the nonlinear final element analysis. Okay, the way you model the material, the way you model the boundary condition, the way you model your entire system that needs certain judgment. So you might have probably, you know, heard many times that, okay, nonlinear analysis is difficult, it doesn't converge, you know, there's lots of problem, there are, you know, lots of difficulty. So why this kind of difficulties? Let's try to understand what really happens in the nonlinear analysis. In a nonlinear analysis, it is non-uniqueness, is non-existence. Isn't scaling does not work the way we have studied in linear analysis. Superimposition doesn't work at all. And the history it is a history dependence. What does it mean by non-uniqueness? Let me explain with there's a small image. So the blue line that you see is a response of the curve. Suppose you want to apply certain load P. And here you can see that for the load P, there is a no intersection with response curves, meaning there's a no solution. And in this case, you have the unique solution out here. If the response of structure is something like this, for example, like hyperelastic material, you could, it can be highly nonlinear, something like this. So you can see there are multiple intersection points, meaning there are multiple solutions for load level P. So what does it really mean is there may be no solution, there may be one solution, there may be two solutions, there are many solutions, and there may be infinite number of solutions. And that's the biggest challenge when you're doing nonlinear analysis. So this basically, because of this, the users sometimes get confused, they are stuck, and sometimes they're scared. So should, should we stop doing nonlinear analysis? No, because there's a need of the time. And if you want a realistic simulation, if you want to capture our physics, there is no other way using the nonlinear analysis. Okay, we have to adopt this technology. The need is that we need to understand the nonlinearity in detail so that we can apply our engineering judgment and we can simulate the real scenario. So why why problem becomes nonlinear? Let's try to look into this. There are uh, three types of nonlinearity, like material nonlinearity, geometric nonlinearity, and the boundary nonlinearities. So let's see one by one. The material, the material behavior can also make your problem nonlinear. Specifically, when whenever you have the nonlinear stress and strain behavior. For example, let's look at this: the typical stress strain of the uh, ferrous metal. So the beginning is a linear, but as it crosses the yield stress, it becomes nonlinear. Even the rubber material have highly nonlinear stress strain curve. So that also makes your problem nonlinear. There's no linear relationship between the stress and the strain. In fact, your model may have some damage and the failure. So when you have the damage, even your material is linear, once it damage, it doesn't you know, fail instantaneously. It holds certain strength. So it fails in a nonlinear fashion. So even this can make your problem nonlinear. Another uh, source of nonlinearity is a geometry, meaning how it's deforming in that perspective. So your structure stiffness may change as your structure is deforming. It may become, I mean, because of the large deflection, large deformation, large rotation and the buckling and the preload. So these are the certain attributes that makes the problem nonlinear. To understand what exactly it means is I have taken a simple example of cantilever beam once again, because very easy to understand. We don't need a complex problem to understand this one. Let's say you have a load P and you have certain deflection. So this equation holds good if you have all the assumption in the place lean elastic, large, small deformation, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if your deformation is more, what really happens? So it has deformed, deformed something like this. 
Now, if you decompose your force, is a PV and PH. Now you see here this P is actually vertical load. Now the vertical related to um, with reference to the length, it has changed to PV. So the deflection that you compute will not be in the vertical direction, it will be in other direction. And on top of it, the value of force vertical to the length has also changed. So the response does not remain linear. It has become non-linear. So these are some of the examples like it is, is a buckle, you know, is a buckling. This is a um, hyper elastic component, uh, is a keypad dome when you press keyboard, keyboard. So it basically touches the flows, there's a simulation. So your problem, in any problem, you may have any type of non-linearity in it, into it, like material, geometry, boundary, and even all together in a same problem can be also present. So let's talk about the boundary or the contact. We also call it the contract nonlinearity. So boundary nonlinearity boundary non occurs when a load or restraint changes in response to structural deformation, meaning as structure is deforming over the time, the boundary condition is changing. Okay, there's a reason it makes problem non-linear, like contact. And you know, contact is basically, it also changes the boundary condition during deformation. Even the follower forces, follower forces meaning the direction of force is changing as structure is deforming like pressure. It will always act perpendicular to the surface. So as it deforms, direction will change. So that also makes your problem non-linear. Look at this particular problem of differential carrier here. There are lots of gear and there are connection. I mean, there are contact between these gears. As gear moves, you know, the different area come to come into the picture. In fact, if you look at here, this is a seating system and is a seat anchorage test. It is basically pulled, so the entire structure it deforms. So you see there are lots of different components which are in contact. So these kind of thing cannot be done with the linear analysis. That's how the nonlinear find element analysis have been developed over the time. So contact makes your problem nonlinear, and this is a you know a very highly discontinuous form of the nonlinearity. Let's try to understand with a simple same cantilever problem why contact will make your problem linear, you know, what exactly is happening, you know, under, uh, during our simulation. So here, um, if you look at, you have uh, load P100 applied, so deflection is 10, you apply 200, the deflection is 20. Now I assume that all the assumption are in the place, so this is a linear response, you know, 100, 10 mm, 220 mm is linear response. Now you have put a small block here in the contact. So what will have going to happen? 400 Newton, 10 mm, that's perfectly fine. But what about 200? Will it deform like this? No, it's going to basically come up here. So the relationship doesn't remain linear now. Instead of 20 mm, now it has become 15. It's not a linear response. It has become non-linear. So let's look at this one is a tire was rolling on the road is a hydroplaning actually, but concentrate on the tire rolling on the road. So different section of the tire comes into contact with the road. And that's how your problem becomes nonlinear. So we can see it's very easy for us to understand there's a block, but for fine element analysis, it doesn't know there's a block. It has to be computed each and every time for each and every node and all the time. And there's a reason the computation of contact is very, very computationally expensive and it makes your problem highly nonlinear. So now the point is how we solve this kind of problem, you know? So there are many techniques for solving uh, the nonlinear analysis. Uh, mostly these are the incremental iterative techniques. You know? The most probable is the Newton Raption one. So what we basically do is, with the same simple example we are trying to explain here, you have the cantilever beam, you have the load applied here. So what do we do if we have 100 Newton load, what we are going to do, we are not going to solve for 100 because it's a nonlinear. We don't know how structure is behaving. 
So we divide into small fraction of the load, let's say increment load increment one, apply 10 Newton load, you solve it. Apply another 10 Newton load, so total is 20 Newton load, you solve for 20 Newton, you solve for 30 Newton, and finally you solve for the 100 Newton. Keep adding a small fraction and keep solving it. So this is a incremental, incremental iterative approach. So let's try to understand the Newton reaction, what exactly happened. Let's assume that uh, this, this line, the black line is a response of any system. You have certain component, you applied forces, whatever it is, and this is deflection versus load curve. Now you have applied total force and our objective is to compute what is the total deflection here. So how would software actually solves it? So it basically begins at the beginning of the problem. At the beginning of the problem, when your structure is undeformed, you can actually compute the initial stiffness. So this is the line, this is the initial stiffness, okay. So as we have, to, I know, uh, I have explained, is incremental. We don't apply the load at once. We apply load incrementally, like 10 Newton, 20 Newton, 30 Newton. So here is a first increment where we apply small fraction of load. So this line you know now, you also you know this particular slope, this is initial stiffness, and it try to solve the problem, it gets the solution. So this intersection point is a solution for iteration one. But here you can see this solution is far away. So there is an error, there are a residual. So what it does, it again solves it. So it's called another iteration. It keeps solving, there are many iteration in given increment till it keeps solving till the solution that you get is very close and the error is very very small so once it's very small residual is small error is small it says the u1 is the solution for load increment one for example 10 newton and in the same way then it apply another 10 newton let's say 20 newton and it will try to solve it will iterate and iterate and iterate it till it gets the u2 and it will keep adding loads 10 newton 20 newton 30 newton till 100 percent load is applied and finally you get u3 over here so this is a, a simple uh, explanation of uh, how incremental iterative techniques are used in nonlinear solution this is very simplest form of explanation this whole thing are done in all three dimensional for each and every node for each and every degree of freedom if you think about the million degree of freedom so these calculations are being done for each and every degree of freedom so it's really computationally intensive So Abacus, I mean, um, for last you know, 41 years, it's been almost 41 years when Abacus was founded. So um, there are lots of development going on and is one of the best in class uh, nonlinear solver in terms of the capability, in terms of the robustness, in terms of the applicability. Um, at this point of time is a de facto standard for the OEMs for any nonlinear solution. Uh, not only the automotive, but uh, it is used across different industries like in you know, a consumer package, life science, aerospace, automotive transportation, and you know, all high technology areas, architecture, construction, industrial equipment, and energy, because of the fact that is uh, the robust and its capability is very, very strong. So let's take a very quick um, uh, capability of the abacus. I mean, the capability spans from the designer level to the expert, wherein designer can simulate a small component and expert can you know, simulate even the entire car wherein you have uh, thousands of component uh, model and interacting with each other with, with the high deformation scenario. So Abacus um, as a standard de facto standard for uh, nonlinear simulation, you can do different kinds of analysis like static, dynamic, linear, nonlinear, not only the structure, but you can have a multi-physics capability into it. So when you have this capability uh, in the place, you actually stop making any assumption. Instead of making say linear or fixing somewhere, you can have your model correct, okay? and um, you stop making assumption, you perform the realistic simulation because you are reducing the assumption, your modeling is 
very close to the, the real life uh, scenario. And you can simulate your product, you can simulate the nature, and in fact, you can simulate the life. So this, I call it you know, lifelike uh, simulation. So this was not possible in 1970s and 80s time because uh, the development of the codes were not so strong. And thanks to the computation, computational power also, so computational power has been you know, uh, outperformed and uh, the computational resources are available in terms of the laptop and, and the high computing power that enables you to use uh, nonlinear analysis as well. So I would recommend you do stop uh, making any assumption and wherever needed it, you use, take the advantage of uh, the, um, the technology that we have and you can simulate a um, real lifelike uh, scenario with nonlinear tool. So as I explained, the contact is a most um, you know, severe form of the nonlinearity and that makes your problem challenging, okay? So Abacus um, as a robot is a higher, you know, extremely robust in terms of the contact, is a de facto standard for contact analysis uh, at OEM level, is very accurate and realistic. We have the general contact capability, very easy to uh, model the contact. So you can see uh, some of the example that we can solve with Abacus here. And another um, challenging part for the modeling uh, non-year analysis is material. Abacus has extensive library uh, for the material model. You can have model metals, rubber, composite. You can model linear, non-linearities, elasticity, plasticity, isotropic, anisotropic, freight dependency, polymers, paste, concrete, cement, metals, rubbers, and most of the engineering material you should be able to model with it. Okay, and not only when with this non-linear technology and advancement of final element analysis, uh, you should be able to uh, have the realistic simulation. For the realistic, realistic simulation, you need to stop the assumption and make the real scenario. In fact, um, there's also some Simulia portfolio enables you to go beyond the realistic simulation. It's not just to capture what is happening in the real fit, but actually going beyond that one. So in a simulia, there are different tools that will enable you to uh, not only simulate uh, your test virtually, but you can also find the life of your component and the system. You can automate your system. You can also optimize it. So Abacus is for final element analysis. FeSafe is for life estimation. I iSight for automation, optimization. And Tosca is for the optimization. So in today's world, I mean, just satisfying the you know load criteria is not sufficient it has to be optimized to be successful in the market so we capture the complete spectrum of uh, product life cycle management here so in fact um, in um, next month uh, next month uh, our uh, our uh, vp uh, advanced engineering uh, who is also managing partner of um, wise corporation Arindam Chaudhary, who is also director of uh, India Business, is coming uh, to India, and he, he would be happy to meet you. So please let us know. Um, we can we can work together. We can collaborate, and we can help uh, in terms of uh, uh, the products, and we can help in terms of the engineering consulting, in terms of training. So please feel free to contact us. And then I will move how the nonlinear tools can be used to simulate the realistic uh, behavior. I will start with the automotive use cases. These are some of the use cases. Uh, Raghavan, so, I'll be interrupting. Sorry, sorry for the interruption. Uh, you just have five minutes more before we proceed towards our Q and A session. Okay, sure. Okay, so Abacus is unified, meaning is one tool can be used for different domains, crash, and VH, ride and handling, uh, different. Well, a component level, the system level, body, powertrain, chassis, and uh, even for multi disemplary optimization is one tool that can be used in the multiple industries and multiple domains. is a unified tool, a general, pur general purpose tool. So these are some of the customer cases that uh, people are using Abacus to simulate the realities. And these are some differential carrier. You can see there's lots of contact. On the right-hand side, you can see is a ceiling. And the simulation is exactly showing the real life, real uh, behavior. 
So there's the aerospace um, use cases by some of the customers. The bird strike is a large deformation here. We can work with the com composites. We can work with the um, aero aerospace industries. There's a landing gear. And um, as, as I, I mean, also mentioned that um, we are not only the reseller of uh, for the Dassault system, but we have a strong background of consulting and our parent company. And even in India, we would like to you know, replicate that one. We have a strong experience uh, for consulting in uh, various industry, including oil and gas. So these are some of the projects and we have done at our end, uh, like you know, band stiffener, limit loads, and um, buckling analysis of storage tank, elbow erosions, the burst load of the dented pipe. So we, we do you know, um, uh, routine analysis to advanced level analysis uh, and do let us, let us know if any, any uh, requirement at your end. And this is uh, some example coming from life sciences. We can model uh, the stent. The stent is highly nonlinear, high deformation, is a memory alloy. These are the crimped state, and this is how it is deployed when it goes into uh, artery. This is um, the human is a foot that we can simulate. So this we call actually a real um, realistic simulation because it is close to the physics, it's close to the reality. Okay. So with this one, um, I'm done with my technical presentation. And uh, thank you once again for your time and joining the webinar. I hope uh, this webinar was useful. Please um, be, uh, you can visit our homepage and you can also follow up and subscribe our channels in the LinkedIn and the Twitter to get updated about upcoming uh, events, like webinars, seminars, or some technical events and we're looking forward to connect with you. Please let us know any requirement in terms of uh, the licensing uh, that we can help you in terms of services that we can help you. And, and thank you very much once again.